He's got everything going for him. He's got deep knowledge of boxing. He's got custom motto hypnotizing him. He was a different, different guy. It's like a, a different model of fighter than we had ever seen in the heavyweight division before. A fuck destroyer, man. What is it about Mike Tyson that makes fighters genuinely scared to face him in the ring? Tyson, often referred to as Iron Mike, is a name that strikes fear and respect in the hearts of many in the boxing world. His intimidating presence, aggressive fighting style, and devastating knockout power have earned him a reputation as one of the most feared fighters in the history of boxing. Anthony Joshua has weighed in on the debate, offering a fascinating historical context to Tyson's prowess and dominance. Joshua said, It's quite interesting because in the era of Ali's heavyweight reign, the heavyweights were ranked as cruiserweights. So in the Mike Tyson, Larry Holmes, George Foreman, Lennox Lewis era, they started getting bigger. Hence why, in the amateurs, they then created a super heavyweight division. Joshua emphasized the significance of the creation of the super heavyweight division in the amateurs, which now corresponds to what is considered the cruiserweight division in the professional ranks. He added, so the current heavyweight division in the amateurs is what we class as the cruiserweight division in the pros. So Ali went from lightweight and worked his way up. He wouldn't have been a fully-fledged heavyweight. Let's say we bulked Ali up and added size and strength to him. I truly believe my Mike Tyson would have won. In a thought-provoking analysis, Joshua speculated on a hypothetical matchup between Tyson and Ali. Joshua said, The reason being, when you watch the fight between Joe Frazier and Ali, you see a certain Tyson-esque style in Frazier. Tyson used to study Frazier. Moving, moving, hooks, hooks. He managed to put Ali down. It was a very tough fight for him. Joshua's insights into Tyson's Tyson-esque style and his belief that Tyson was better schooled and more developed due to the advancements in sports science and information over the years add another layer of complexity to the debate surrounding Tyson's fearsome reputation. He said, I just believe Tyson was better schooled because times have evolved. He was more developed with more science, more information. So Tyson would have won, in my humble opinion. The legacy of Mike Tyson's intimidating presence and devastating power in the boxing world is further validated by the first-hand experiences and insights of fellow boxing legends. Roy Jones Jr., a formidable fighter in his own right, shared his experiences and observations from their bout. Jones said, He is capable of fighting anybody. I survived it. I'm happy to scratch it off the bucket list and move on with my life. Jones Jr. recounted the physical toll of facing Tyson, emphasizing the raw power and intensity of Tyson's punches. Despite surviving the encounter, Jones Jr. spoke candidly about the aches and pains he experienced throughout the fight, noting that Tyson's blows left him feeling sore and fatigued. He, he hit harder, everything hurt. His hands hurt, his head hurts, everything hurt when it made contact. So was like, I'm like, wow. Acknowledging the unique challenge of returning to the ring after a two-year hiatus to face Tyson, a towering figure in boxing history, Jones Jr. reflected on his strategy going into the fight. Drawing from Tyson's previous bouts with Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield, Jones Jr. focused on clinching Tyson on the inside to neutralize his devastating uppercuts and power punches. And, and, and it makes you so fatigued trying to deal with him, trying to cause on the inside. You got to keep his arm locked. I learned that from watching Lennox Lewis and Holyfield fight. You got to lock his arms up or he'll hit you with them uppercuts. So I was trying to keep his arms locked up and every time I let him go, what you think I'm gonna let him go so he can kill me? Nah, bro. <laughs> it's not gonna happen like this. Jones Jr. highlighted the importance of working on the clinches and landing punches on the inside while keeping his hands locked up to prevent Tyson from unleashing his full power. Despite feeling considerable pain from Tyson's punches, including a sore jaw from a powerful uppercut, Jones Jr. asserted that he never felt dizzy or entertained the thought of collapsing onto the canvas. To work on the clinches, and with the clinches, it made it good. So I was able to lay punches on the inside and clinch and get him back before he could ever throw anything good. So that's what, that's what my strategy was going in. That's what our strategy was going in, was to clinch him on the inside, box him outside, clinch him inside. Jones recounted experiencing considerable pain from two punches, but asserted he never felt dizzy or entertained the thought of collapsing onto the canvas. Oh, I never thought about dropping, but it was two good shots. One good body shot he hit me with, and one good, he hit me with a, a, a uppercut straight up and threw my jaw off a little bit, but uh, my jaw still a little sore, but it's all good. It happens in fighting, you know what I mean? So it's like, I knew it was going to happen. Um, I was glad I was able to take the shots and not. Reflecting on Tyson's formidable presence in the ring, Jones Jr. commented on Tyson's physicality, noting that despite officially weighing 220 pounds, Tyson appeared even more massive and imposing in person. He acknowledged the inherent risks of facing Tyson, emphasizing that all it takes is one punch from either fighter to change the course of the fight and cause significant damage. Go, dude, he bigger than he weigh. He weigh 220, but. 
Now he more massive than 220, trust me. Roy Jones Jr.'s first-hand account of his bout with Mike Tyson provides valuable insights into the enduring legacy and fearsome reputation of Tyson in the boxing world. It provides a revealing insight into the physical and psychological challenges of facing a boxing legend of Tyson's caliber. Now, let's go back in time. In the zenith of Tyson's career, stretching approximately from 1987 to 1990, he emerged as an unstoppable juggernaut. His mesmerizing displays inside the boxing ring left both onlookers and adversaries spellbound. Notably, UFC commentator Joe Rogan lauded Tyson's unparalleled supremacy during his prime, acknowledging his transformative impact on the sport of boxing. Look at a, a fighter's career. <clears throat> Sometimes people forget about the high points. They don't look at the low points. They look at a fighter when they're not as good anymore, when they're not as committed anymore, maybe they have health problems. They don't look at the time when they were at their highest RPMs. That's what you gotta look at. It. In a vintage segment of his JRE podcast, the ex-host of Fear Factor underscored the unparalleled dominance and distinctiveness of Tyson's peak era. Rogan didn't just see Tyson as any ordinary boxer, but as an extraordinary specimen in the ring. His explosive might and unyielding ferocity distinct distinguished him from all predecessors in the heavyweight realm. Rogan painted Tyson as a force of nature, an indomitable entity that instilled dread in the very souls of his adversaries. But Mike Tyson, in his prime, in those years from like, what was it, like 86, 87 to 89, 90, whatever those years were, where he was just storming the gates. I, I put that Mike Tyson up against anybody who ever lived. Rogan emphasized the unique qualities that set Tyson apart from other heavyweight fighters, describing him as a different model of fighter that revolutionized the division. Tyson's relentless aggression, impeccable technique, and devastating knockout power made him a force to be reckoned with, leaving a trail of defeated opponents in his wake. Rogan's admiration for Tyson's skills and dominance is evident in his description of every fight during Tyson's prime as an execution. He praised Tyson's ferociousness, destructiveness, and accuracy highlighting the perfection with which Tyson executed his game plan and dispatched his opponents. That guy was a special fighter. The Mike Tyson that beat Marvis Frazier was a beast. He was a, just a juggernaut. Just you couldn't stop him. He was coming at you and he had everything. He had knowledge, he had this deep library of, of films that he would watch because his, his manager was Jim Jacobs, who was this boxing historian. Joe Rogan's glowing tribute to Mike Tyson during his prime years serves as a powerful reminder of the impact and influence Tyson had on the sport of boxing. Tyson's unmatched combination of skill, power, and aggression left an indelible mark on the heavyweight division, earning him a place among the greatest fighters to ever step into the ring. Rogan's assessment of Tyson as a special fighter and a juggernaut reaffirms Tyson's status as a boxing legend and underscores his enduring legacy in the world of combat sports. So Tyson would sit and watch all these great fighters. This is Mar this is the Marvis Frazier fight. This to me is prime Tyson, other than winning the title at 20, which was prime too. But this is Mike Tyson when he was just at his fucking most destructive best. He just stalked people down and smashed them. And he moved so well. That was part of the thing about Tyson that people forget. It wasn't just the knockout punching. It was he was so hard to hit, man. As Rogan reminisced about Tyson's glory days, he illuminated the extraordinary attributes that cemented his status as a boxing icon. Despite Tyson's tumultuous journey in the 1990s and 2000s, marred by numerous off-court controversies, Rogan believes that fighters like him should be judged not by their entire careers, but by moments of unmatched brilliance. Yeah, where every fight was an execution and you know people would look at like later on in his life like look at this is this is him taking Marvis out I mean just ferocious destructive accurate precise everything is perfect perfect the and technique strong. is perfect so strong, strong. So he had everything going for him in the nascent stages of his journey tyson endured the profound loss of his mentor and paternal guide customato yet undeterred he persisted in stepping into the ring month after month driven by the fervent desire to realize the prophetic visions that cuss had bestowed upon him the only time he had been taken this deep into a battle he stopped jesse ferguson in six rounds during fight number 18 ferguson told ring magazine tyson was unstoppable 
unstoppable when we fought. He caught me with a great shot. He hit me with an uppercut that made my eyes water. Despite the physical and psychological pressures of the fight, Ferguson acknowledged Tyson's strength, speed, and exceptional boxing skills, describing him as one of the nicest guys he has ever met in the sport. Ferguson added, I held on until I heard the bell, but after that, my corner couldn't stop my nose from bleeding. It was a big distraction. I had to keep holding until the referee said enough was enough. Interestingly, Ferguson revealed that he had the opportunity to spar with Tyson for 11 of his title fights, providing valuable insights into Tyson's development and evolution as a fighter. He added, Tyson was strong and fast, but everything was in his favor as we were in his hometown. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in the game. I sparred with him for 11 of his title fights. Meanwhile, Tyson made a statement by winning his most well-known early bout and the fastest in his career. Marvis Frazier, the unfortunate victim, was knocked out in less than 30 seconds. Frazier simply told Boxing News, I threw a jab and I don't remember anything else. Shortly following his victory over Frazier, Tyson ascended to the pinnacle of the boxing world, clinching the WBC Heavyweight Championship by triumphing over Trevor Burbick. Subsequently, he solidified his dominance by securing both the WBA and IBF titles. Larry Holmes, the once revered champion of yesteryears, fixed his gaze on the rising star who had claimed the coveted title. Larry Holmes told Ring Magazine, When I fought Mike Tyson, I was off for two years. I hadn't been in shape to fight him, and they gave me two months to get ready. Tyson's a good puncher, he's down low, he was good, he was short, and he had to get up to get to you. Holmes also reflected on the state of the heavyweight division at the time of his fight with Tyson, noting the absence of legendary fighters like Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, and prime Larry Holmes himself. Holmes added, Tyson was good, but there was nobody there in the heavyweight division at the time. No Muhammad Ali, no prime Larry Holmes, no George Foreman. I should have had a tune-up. No excuses, Mike Tyson whooped me fair and square. Even after winning every official body title, Tyson was not regarded as the indisputable champion until his bout with Michael Spinks. The lone challenger from the United States stood as the final obstacle to Mike's dominance, yet etched his name in boxing lore by relinquishing his coveted Ring Magazine and lineal titles in a mere 91 seconds. Spinks told Ring Magazine, I knew I had a tough fight on my hands and tried to get through it as best I could, and I came up short. He had good hand speed. That was one of his biggest assets. He had power and hand speed, and that was hard to beat. Spinks acknowledged the formidable challenge he faced in Tyson, highlighting Tyson's exceptional hand speed and power as his biggest assets. He recognized Tyson's ability to close the distance quickly and deliver powerful punches, describing Tyson as a very strong and elusive opponent. Interestingly, Spinks expressed uncertainty about the source of Tyson's extraordinary strength, further adding to the mystique and allure surrounding Tyson's prowess as a fighter. Despite his own accomplishments and skills as a boxer, Spinks admitted that Tyson was the biggest puncher he had ever faced, underscoring Tyson's reputation as one of the most formidable and feared fighters in the history of boxing. Spinks added, Tyson knew how to get in real fast. That was one of his strengths too. He'd slide up on you real quick and get in the punches. He was very strong. I don't know what made him so strong. Mike Tyson was most definitely the biggest puncher I ever fought. Peter McNeely, who faced Mike Tyson in Tyson's comeback fight in 1995, provided valuable insights into the experience of stepping into the ring with the former undisputed heavyweight champion. McNeely acknowledged Tyson's impressive speed, power, and experience, highlighting the challenges of facing such a formidable opponent. McNeely told Ring Magazine, I did what I said I was going to do, and I went right at him. He had a lot of experience, so when I did what I did, I was off balance with the first knockdown, and he caught me with a really good straight right. McNeely emphasized the deadly combination of Tyson speed and power, describing any fighter over 200 pounds as capable of delivering powerful punches, but noting that Tyson's unique combination of speed and power made him a particularly dangerous opponent. McNeely added, Then I went right at him again, and at the end he caught me with his best punch, the uppercut, and I went down. He was all speed. He had blinding fast speed. It surprised me how fast. I don't care what fighter you are. Any fighter over 200 pounds can punch. But with him, the power and that speed? Deadly combination. Evander Holyfield, one of the most accomplished and respected boxers boxers in the history of the sport provided a detailed and insightful perspective on his iconic rivalry with Mike Tyson. Their two memorable fights in 1996 and 1997 are among the most talked about and controversial bouts in boxing history, showcasing both fighters' unique skills and tenacity. Holyfield acknowledged Tyson's exceptional talent and skills, describing him as a good and very talented fighter with unique abilities that set him apart from other opponents. Holyfield contrasted his own boxing skills with Tyson's punching power, highlighting Tyson's technical proficiency and ability to execute punches with precision and effectiveness. Holyfield told Ring Magazine, He was a good fighter, a very talented fighter, and he had some skills that other people didn't have. I was a good boxer, and he was a good puncher, and he was very technical with a lot of things. Despite Holyfield's recognition of Tyson's skills, he emphasized his own resilience and boxing prowess, noting that he hit Tyson with some good shots that would have put many other opponents
opponents down. Holyfield highlighted Tyson's heart and determination, acknowledging that despite hurting Tyson multiple times during their fights, Tyson showed resilience and refused to go down, showcasing his fighting spirit and determination to continue despite the punishment. In the second fight, Tyson's disqualification for biting Holyfield's ear remains one of the most controversial moments in boxing history. Yes. I was getting ready to bite the daylights out of him. And I was going to bite him in the face. I would bite him in the face. I was going to wait for the ear. I was going to get the fat stuff. You know, cause, you know, when you're from the ghetto, they say, if you do something, you got to do it worse than what they did. Right. And so, you know, and I told Mike in, in a talk show, I said, no. I said, no, I, I was pretending like... And like I was hurting real bad. While Holyfield's account focuses primarily on Tyson's skills and resilience, the controversial nature of their second fight further adds to the complexity and intrigue surrounding their iconic rivalry. Holyfield added, I hit him with some good shots at the end. He never did go down and I hit him with a lot of shots that had put a lot of people down. He showed that he did have the heart. I hurt him a lot and the referee stopped the fight. Meanwhile, Julius Francis, a British boxer, had the unique opportunity to face Mike Tyson during Tyson's rebuilding phase following the controversial incidents in his bouts with Evander Holyfield. The fight against Francis took place in Manchester, UK, and resulted in a second-round stoppage in Tyson's favor. Francis recalled his experience facing Tyson, emphasizing his decision to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the feared heavyweight rather than adopting a defensive or evasive strategy. Francis's approach was driven by a desire to earn Tyson's respect in the ring, choosing to engage in a direct confrontation rather than attempting to outmaneuver Tyson around the ring. Francis said, I only remember the first knockdown. I thought, who the f do you think you are hitting me? So I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Reflecting on the fight, Francis expressed no regrets about his approach and acknowledged the significance of his boxing career and the unique experience of facing one of the most formidable fighters in the history of the sport. Despite the outcome of the fight, Francis highlighted the opportunity to share the ring with Tyson as a defining moment in his life and career as a professional boxer. He added, If I had boxed and run around the ring, I do not think I would have got any respect from him. I've got no regrets. I've lived a relatively good life and been able to say I've became a professional boxer and fought one of the baddest guys who ever boxed. The fight against Francis in Manchester marked another chapter in Tyson's storied career, as he sought to rebuild his reputation and return to the pinnacle of the heavyweight division following a tumultuous period in his personal and professional life. Lou Savarez, a seasoned boxer who had faced notable opponents like George Foreman and Evander Holyfield, shared his experience of fighting Mike Tyson in Glasgow in 2000. Despite his extensive experience in the ring, Savarez highlighted the unique and unparalleled attention and hype that surrounded a bout with Tyson, emphasizing the magnitude and global interest generated by a fight against the former undisputed heavyweight champion. Savarese told Ring Magazine, When you're fighting Tyson, the whole hype behind it, the mystique about him. I fought George Foreman. I fought Evander Holyfield. But when you fight Tyson, it's so different with the magnitude and how much attention it gets. Savarese acknowledged the mental challenge of facing Tyson, noting the difference between believing one can win and actually achieving victory in the ring. He added, I always thought I could win in my head. It doesn't mean I can. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. The thing about him that's amazing is there are guys that are strong and there are guys that are fast. He's strong and fast. One of the most striking aspects of Savarese's reflections on his fight with Tyson was his appreciation for Tyson's combination of strength and speed. Savarese described Tyson as both strong and fast, highlighting the deceptive quickness that sets Tyson apart from other fighters. Savarese said, it's so deceiving how quick he is. That's what makes him so different. You don't realize how quick he is until you get in there with him. Despite his own skills and experience, Savarese recognized the challenge and mystique surrounding Tyson, acknowledging Tyson's exceptional combination of strength and speed that continues to set him apart from other fighters, underscores Tyson's lasting impact and legacy in the world of boxing, as well as the mental and physical challenges faced by his opponents when stepping into the ring with one of the greatest fighters in the history of the sport. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.